I've been working with 3D for ages now, but believe it or not, I've never actually 3D printed any of my work. I've always wanted to, but I never really got around to it. This is about to change. Not only am I going to try 3D printing for the very first time, but I will also use the iPad to do all the work. This could end badly. For the printing part, I'm not going to build a 3D printer or anything like that. I'm not interested in learning the intricacies of printing. I just want someone else to deal with the hassle. So I'll be using a printing service and the one I've always wanted to try out is Shapeways. Their website is really nicely structured with a big selection of materials along with quite a bit of information about them. And on top of that, the quality looks great, at least from what I've seen from the photos. So this part we have nailed down. Now the modeling part. I'm using Shaper 3D on the iPad, which is easily the best 3D modeler on the iPad, by far. Plus it has a ton of exporting options, so it's perfect for the job. The model I created with the app is this cute little robot, and you can see the whole building process in one of my older videos. If you haven't watched it already, I'll have it linked in the description below and on the card on the top right. The only problem with the robot model is that it's not really built for 3D printing. It was just an exercise in testing out a desktop and tablet workflow and whether that was possible. So I need to do some adjustments before sending it out to print. I started by joining everything together with Boolean operations. This part was not really difficult, it's just a matter of selecting objects and merging them together. Some things though weren't as obvious. Will this thing be able to stand on its own without a base? I probably need to increase the thickness of this thing. I don't think it can hold the entire weight of the trolley and everything else on top. Hmm. Can this whole part balance on the wheel? Is this thing going to be printable? It kind of looks a little bit too thin. I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> In hindsight, my instincts were right, and I actually did reinforce several areas of the model, like the flimsy little base underneath the trolley, or the super thin base for the speaker. While I was aware of these issues, I was also very excited about the 3D printing possibilities, and I didn't pay the attention needed when working on these parts. And that certainly came back to bite me, but more on that later on. Once I had a version I was satisfied with, exporting the model and uploading it to Shapeways was extremely easy to do. There's a size limit on the uploaded file, so I ended up uploading a step file, which has a really tiny size. So in case you're having problems with Shapeways not accepting your big files, just use step instead. I was really excited about Shapeways metallic options, so I was dead set to use whatever metal option I could afford. Having this robot character in metal would look really cool. My dreams were quickly shattered, though. Wow. <laughs> Let's do copper. It's only 2,300 <laughs> euros. Oh, and I can get the polished version for 600 euros plus. <laughs> 3,079 euros. Yeah, okay. Let's not do that. Oh, oh I can also pick... <laughs> I can also pick gold for 48,000. I think I should do that. <laughs> Hold on. Platinum is more expensive than gold. Okay. It's 108,000. <laughs> yeah, let's buy two. So, plastic it is. Glass beads, let's try this one. Okay, this looks like a nice material. Alright, not bad. So that's one, then we have the sandstone. Ah, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna color it, so... Nylon... Okay... That doesn't look bad as well, but it's white, I don't want white. Okay, yeah, no. So, we're gonna go with uh, multi-jet fusion plastic. Jesus, 60 euros for that, and then I don't even know. <laughs> if it's gonna print correctly. Okay, uh, yeah, let's do it. Check out now, 79 euros, holy crap. What is 366 for processing? This better look amazing. 
Okay, priority is 24 euros 59. Wow. Some extra stuff. Okay, should I do priority or economy? Uh, no, I'm gonna do economy. I kinda wanna do the priority. Oh, 100 euros down the drain. <sighs> uh, place your order. After accepting the fact that I paid more than 100 euros for a piece of plastic, I was looking forward to getting the print in my hands. This is the point in the story where you assume I would cut to the final product. <laughs> well, we're not there yet. As it turns out, I did a really poor job preparing the model. So a couple of days later, I received a very detailed email from Shapeways pointing out the weak areas of my model. That was really cool to see. I quickly fixed that and re-uploaded. Unfortunately, once the model is out of production, you have to wait several days for it to get back into production. And of course, that means days before someone checks the model again. And that's when I received my second email from Shapeways. This time, the issue was with another area of the model. I have no idea why this wasn't brought up on the first check, but I was eager to move the process forward. So instead of me messing up and having to wait for several more days, I opted to have Shapeways fix the issue. It's nice to see that they offer that option. Two thousand years later. By now, a couple of weeks have passed already, so I was getting quite impatient. <laughs> but unfortunately, this wasn't the end of my problems. A few days later, I received yet another email from Shapeways. By now, it's been close to a month with this back and forth thing, so I decided to basically do what I should have done right from the beginning. Sit down and carefully go through the model and make sure that all parts have proper thickness. To Shapeways credit, they have a ton of information about the materials and the tolerances for each one of them, but of course, I never really bothered reading any of that. I mean, come on, where's the fun in that? By now, I had zero faith that the model would ever be printed, but I wanted to at least give it my best shot. Whenever I felt the thickness of an element was good enough, I just went ahead and doubled whatever values were there. I strengthened pretty much all parts of the object. Thankfully, Shaper has some really nice tools and adjusting those parts was relatively easy to do. Most of the time, it was just a matter of me moving surfaces around to increase thickness, increasing the radius of cylindrical parts, and so on and so forth. This also gave me the time to revisit other problematic areas of the model, so I cleaned up a lot of the geometry, fixed some misalignments, removed some unnecessary details, and a ton of other little fixes. By the end, I felt like I had a good enough model that could be printed without issues. Of course, when you haven't done this before, what you think is good and what actually is good is two totally different things. But I went ahead and uploaded the model and hoped for the best. And finally, a few days later, I received this. <coughs> Things moved ridiculously fast after that. The very next day, I had the model at my doorstep. Let's see. It's so cool to see something that started out as a sketch transform into a 3D model and then to an actual physical model. It's a very rewarding feeling. What I'm trying to say here is that I'm hooked. Now I want to 3D print everything. I definitely won't since this is an incredibly expensive hobby, but for sure I want to try out a couple more materials. Definitely some of the metallic options, but it's going to be on much simpler and smaller models. I don't want to pay hundreds of euros for a simple model. I feel that the whole process was a great learning experience. For example, one of the most important lessons I learned is to always work with a final printed scale in mind. I initially scaled down the object on Shapeways website, which is perfectly fine to do, but it meant that I wasn't really paying attention to tolerances. Once I scaled down the whole model inside Shaper, it was much easier to check if all parts had the right thickness. Another thing I realized, which is nothing new to anyone doing product prototyping, is the following. Having a physical object in your hands immediately brings up any issues your model might have. Something that might not be obvious when working with a model on a screen. For example, in my object, the handlebars of the trolley and part of the robot's hands are thinner compared to the rest of the object. So the model in this area feels a little bit unbalanced. 
It's not that you cannot see that in the actual 3D model, it's just more obvious when you hold it in your hand. Finally, before printing, make sure to check the materials available and their different qualities. Some of them might have different tolerances, so it's better to design with those in mind instead of spending valuable time bouncing fixes back and forth between you and the printing service. Basically, don't do what I did. <laughs> and that's it. I've already started thinking about what my next printed model will be. If you haven't tried 3D printing, give it a go. It's really cool to get to hold in your hands something that was just a virtual object. You don't even need to be a professional modeler. An iPad and a modeling program is all you need to start designing pretty much anything you have in mind. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. Hope you had fun, and if you did, please don't forget to like the video. It helps the channel immensely. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.